Who are you? Why is this mother running from my questions? Jason Matero with the Crime Watch Daily. What does she have to hide? Why won't you cooperate with the investigation, Julia? Shouldn't she want to help in any way possible to find her missing son? Come on, Julia. And maybe the most pressing question, why is she calling the cops on me when the cops are dying to talk to her? You call the cops, but yet you don't want to cooperate with the police? It all starts with a loving two-year-old. He was uh, like a boy boy. Loved to jump on me when he was older. And his dad, Solomon, says it's his big brown eyes that can melt any heart. He was just, just, just pure love. But what happened to Sky Metawala on a chilly November day in Washington state is now a mystery that has investigators scratching their heads and has everyone else pointing fingers. Our community wants justice if something really happened to Sky. Sky's father, born in Pakistan, met his wife, Julia Buryakova, out of all places, a gas station. What attracted you to Julia? Her, her looks, of course. She's, she's beyond beautiful. She was very giving. She also was very supportive. The two quickly married and had a daughter named Miley. But Solomon started to notice some strange things about his new wife. She would obsessively clean the house three to four hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, this is this, this cannot cannot be normal. But that I I didn't really understand that until you know now. And as a mother, Solomon says Julia was really starting to struggle. Only thing Julia had to do was get up in the morning, get Miley dressed, and take her to daycare, and that's it, you know? But she couldn't do it. After Sky was born, Solomon knew his wife needed help, especially after he heard these chilling words from his young daughter. Miley started to say, I want to kill myself, because Julia was saying it so much when she was around Miley. Then, according to court documents, Solomon received a terrifying text from his wife that said in part, quote, I cannot live another day. I am dead on the inside anyway and have been dead for a long time. Julia was immediately committed to a hospital. Months later, after changing medication, she seemed to be turning things around. Life was good. Life was good. Life just got way good. <laughs> but that didn't last long. Julia's tortured ritual of cleaning the house got even worse. Now she was up to six hours a day. Solomon says he had no other choice but to divorce Julia and take custody of the kids. Julia and her husband were in the middle of a bitter custody battle. David Rose, host of Washington's Most Wanted, covered every brutal blow. Both of them had protection orders against each other, and the kids were caught right in the middle of this. Julia told the court that Solomon was not telling the truth about her mental illness and obsessive cleaning, and then she lobbed some very ugly accusations toward him. After the separation, Julia said that you had abused the children. When she told me that, I go, what are you talking about? Most disturbing of all, she even claimed Solomon sexually abused his daughter. Why would she say that? A CPS investigation found that claim to be unfounded, and Solomon vehemently denies any and all abuse allegations. He even took a lie detector test and passed. Still, the judge awarded full custody to his wife. What was that like to have your kids taken from you? I mean, you just killed my whole family. Because of the nature of the allegations, Solomon would go a full year without seeing Sky or Miley. Then Julia finally gives in and sets up a time. I was gonna see them that Wednesday. Sadly, that reunion would never happen. His mom said that Sky was sick that morning, so she was going to take him to the doctor in Bellevue. On the way to the doctor, Julia claims that the vehicle had some kind of car trouble. Julia tells police she grabs her four-year-old daughter, Miley, and walks a mile to the nearest gas station for help. But what about two-year-old Sky? Well, the strange thing is, she left that little boy in the car seat in the back by himself. She goes to the gas station. She doesn't get gas. She calls a friend to come get her. They go back to the car, and Sky is gone. Lieutenant Dave DeVore is one of the lead detectives in Skye's disappearance. The child was reportedly sick, right? Exactly. Does that make sense to you? 
No, it does not. Something Bellevue Chief of Police Steve Milet has a hard time understanding as well. You're a father. If your child isn't feeling well, do you just leave him abandoned on the side of the road and then walk to a gas station? It's a great question. What's going through your mind when the police officers say that Sky has gone missing? I think uh, you're in a shock, so your, your, your brain doesn't think. Bellevue police would launch a massive search for Sky, but it didn't take long for investigators to find cracks in Julia's story. We started recognizing that there was some inconsistencies. Ms. Barracover had reported that the vehicle had mechanical problems, turned out to be not true. Um, it had plenty of gas in the tank. So there was gas on the car and nothing mechanically wrong with it? Correct. That's exactly the opposite of what Julia said? Correct. So how would Julia explain that? Well, investigators would never get a chance to ask her. She was brought down to the station where we were going to do some follow-up discussions. Her attorney came in, and that was the end of our contact with her. A little boy missing, a mother not talking, a father desperately searching for answers. Do you believe her? Hell no. What part of her story does it ring true? All of it. How does a happy-go-lucky two-year-old boy simply vanish off the earth? My son is, is not here, and I don't know where he is. David Rose, host of Washington's Most Wanted, has covered the disappearance of Sky Metawala from day one. People are frustrated, and they wonder how could somebody do something to a little boy like this, or how could a little boy just vanish? Making things even more troubling, the mounting evidence that foul play may have been involved. And the one person who could help solve this case isn't talking. Julia holds the key to this case, and we beg her to come forward and talk to us. Julia is Skye's mother, who claims Sky was sick the day of his disappearance. And as she drove him and his four-year-old sister to the hospital, she reportedly had car trouble. Julia told police that her car ran out of gas at this intersection, so she decided to leave her two-year-old son in the car alone and walk to the nearest gas station, which is about a mile away. When she returned to the car more than an hour later, Sky was gone. Why would she walk a mile with her daughter in the cold of a November morning to a gas station? It doesn't make sense. Investigators agree. In fact, a long list of troubling facts started to surface. First, officers say the car had nothing wrong with it. It had plenty of gas in the tank. In fact, we drove the vehicle, and we drove it for a long period of time. Fact number two, she and her ex-husband Solomon were in the middle of a nuclear-sized divorce war. Julia leveling claims of child abuse and Solomon maintaining she suffered from severe mental illness. We've had, you know, um, conversations about, okay, you need to go get help. And her response was, you know, I'm fine. Fact number three, this wasn't the first time Little Sky would be left in a car. Two years earlier, Julia and Solomon were both cited by police after locking the little boy in a car while they went shopping inside a Target for 55 minutes. You're clearly remorseful for leaving Sky in the car. You just said it was dumb, inexcusable. Right, 100%. And lastly, fact number four, perhaps the strangest of all, the night before Sky went missing, Law & Order SVU aired an episode where a mother tried covering up the death of her child by claiming the kid was abducted from a parked car. The show is reportedly Julia's favorite program. I think it's very possible that little Sky was never in the vehicle that day and that Julia made up the entire story to cover up something horrible. Solomon hadn't seen either of his kids in more than a year because of their ugly divorce, and he believes Sky was never in that car. I am thinking somehow she sold him to who? We would love to know that, wouldn't we? It has now been six years since Sky went missing. Julia has lost custody of their daughter, Miley, who is now living with her dad, Solomon. Does Julia hold the key to unlocking the mystery of Sky's disappearance? My God, yes, she does. She does. She's the only person we haven't been able to talk to. Police are now calling Julia a person of interest in the case. What about what Skye's father, Solomon, has he been cooperative with the investigation? Very cooperative. I don't know why 
she will not come forward. Well, since Julia won't go and talk to the police, we decided to go to her. Julia's heading to the trunk of her car. Julia, Jason Matera with Crime Watch Daily. Why won't you cooperate with the police? Why won't you cooperate with the police with the investigation for Sky? We're doing a story on Sky's disappearance. Are you trying to hide something? Why won't you cooperate with the investigation, Julia? Sky was your son? It's been now almost six years? You won't talk to cops? She calls the cops on us. It's odd that a mom doesn't want to talk about their missing son. You call the cops, but yet you don't want to cooperate with the police? Do you believe your son is still alive? I'm going to believe that he is because no one can prove me he's not. As for police, they have released new pictures of Julie at the gas station from the day of Sky's reported disappearance, hoping to get new leads, as well as this new age progression photo of what the two-year-old would look like today. And to say this case is a personal one for investigators would be an understatement. Look at this little boy. Look at him. He's two years old. He could be your son. He could be my son. What would finding Sky mean to you personally? Get on my knees and just thank God that we were able to find him. And I get on my knees and I pray that he's alive. Until that day, Chief Steve Milet makes us this promise. This picture will stay on my desk for as long as I'm chief and beyond. And we're going to keep on searching and following every lead until we bring him home and return him to his family.